Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us. We start the show this week with the election of a new council president and vice president. The gavel has been passed to Nancy Navarro as president, and Craig Rice has been elected the council's next vice president. Susan Kennedy has more on this story. Susan? Lorna, it was the changing of the guard at the county council as Vice President Nancy Navarro took over as president, the first Latina in the history of the county council. And to the residents of Montgomery County, thank you for granting me the opportunity to serve. Muchísimas gracias. Ms. Navarro says that during her term, she wants to tackle diversity issues head on as one Montgomery. The idea is that we have to preserve all of what makes us great, but understanding that we are all connected. And so when we you know, talk about, for example, the education budget, it's not just what happens in that classroom, but it's also what happens outside that school building. You know, when we talk about transportation or housing, it's not just to make sure that single family homes are available, but hey, we have an aging demographic as well. And so all these things are interconnected. Recent census numbers show 72,000 Montgomery County residents are living below the poverty line, and one third of this county school children are receiving free and reduced meals. President Navarro says the county needs to provide the infrastructure and support to make sure families have what they need to be successful. People have an assumption of where the poverty is and you know what folks look like but in reality we're talking about middle-class families maybe a parent lost a job or two parents etc and, and all of a sudden they're you know faced with having to come to the local food bank or come to HHS and ask for services um, so I think that it's about being you know aware for us to understand that yes Montgomery County is great because we have a diverse socioeconomic uh, population um, we are not that Montgomery County that was just all wealth and just all affluence and that's important because when we go to the state and we make our our case for the things that we need. Um, we need to make sure that people understand that we're not just asking for the sake of asking. You know, we're putting forth a request to fulfill the needs of our residents. For uh, Ms. Councilmember Craig Rice to be our new vice president, all those in favor. The council's new vice president, Craig Rice, is the youngest African American to ever serve on the council and only the second African American man to serve in that role. Prior to his arrival to the council, he served in the Maryland House of Delegates. He told us he plans to use that experience to make sure Montgomery County gets its fair share of the pie in Annapolis. But I think that overall our number one issue is to make sure that when we go to Annapolis we have a very uh, collaborative effort with our school system, uh, you know, whether it's MCPS or Montgomery College, uh, working with our unions, making sure that the state understands uh, the challenges that we face and how we can best address them and the support that's necessary for Montgomery County. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. There is a brand new county website where county residents can engage and help improve government transparency, accessibility, and efficiency. As part of the open government efforts, Executive Legate and Council Member Hans Rimmer announced the new interactive tools as an approach to reach government. Aside from the website, there is a social media platform to encourage community participation, a digital roadmap to guide service improvements using new technologies. This strategy aims to be disruptive. It provides a roadmap for the county to fundamentally shift how it connects with and provides services to the people of the county serves. It gives the county workforce the tools needed to carry out their mission of delivering services to all residents and businesses. It creates a space for county residents and businesses to become partners in building a better participatory government. The new Open Montgomery website is montgomerycountymd.gov open. This week, we sat down with Executive Legate to tape the last one-on-one show of 2012. Here are some excerpts of that interview as we took a look at the year in review. We are hiring approximately 48 additional personnel in the police department, 44 sworn officers, and this is part of a three-year plan that I have to enhance our department to ensure that we get up to the strength that I think that we should have. I've had to close budgetary gaps over the last uh, four and a half years, now five years now, of 2.6, close to $2.7 billion. That's an awful lot of money. One year alone, we had $970 million. And so to reduce that to the level that we're at today, maintain the quality services that we have in Montgomery County, 
our excellent education system, crime is going down, to enhance the environment and to do all the things that we are doing in Montgomery County. Given the budgetary challenges that we face, I think has been really a remarkable success story. Challenges for us right now will be transportation, transportation, transportation. That's the lifeblood for us in Montgomery County. We will continue the initiative to reduce public safety in terms of crime, continue to enhance our educational system, and do a much better job to ensure that our environment is one that is responsive. And trying to ensure that we provide the, the help and support for the most needed within our community. You can watch the entire show on County Cable Montgomery or visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. It was a first look into county government when 94 students from Lakewood Elementary School visited the Executive Office Building in Rockville to learn directly from the county's top leader about budget, taxes, and jobs. And we're going to what? Think, love yourself, and reach for the stars. It was a simple lesson on how to succeed. The teacher was County Executive Ike Leggett. The students, third graders who came to the doors of government to understand how the executive runs the county. It is important that you do your part. So you have to be good students and learn. You have to participate so that one day you will grow up and provide us with the wonderful jobs, the taxes, so that you may be anything that you see now in county government and beyond. The police officers, the fire personnel, the teachers, the principals, the assistant principals. But in order for all of that to work, you have to do your part. Your part requires you to be outstanding young people in terms of education, to grow up to be wonderful citizens. Keeping the group of 94 focused and engaged was relatively easy. Actually, they were very enthusiastic and had plenty of questions for the executive. The field trip was organized by third grade teacher Marie Pretzel in an attempt to get a creative with the new social studies curriculum. We have a new curriculum this year. It's called the 2.0 curriculum and I looked through the lessons for the whole year and I thought about the things that children would be learning and what we would be doing and I noticed we, the children would be learning about the county government and the county executive. So I got on the phone and made a call and here we are today. The kids heard about the legislative and executive branches of government, how the police and fire departments care for and protect the citizens, about county budget and how services are paid for. The group seemed most impressed when the executive told them that there are 30,000 employees in the county and that the average salary is about $60,000. Members of the Council's Education and Health and Human Services Committee have been updated on the status of child care subsidies. Money was added to this year's budget to help working parents without quality child care options. Council member Valerie Irvin updated us on what effect this funding has had on Montgomery County families. Last year we had almost 1,100 families on a wait list to receive the subsidies, so I was able to work with the county executive uh, to put money back in the budget and we got rid of, we obliterated our wait list, but that doesn't mean that the problem doesn't still exist. So yesterday I found out that through the work of Kate Garvey at uh, DHHS, we're making the subsidies locally bigger so that they go a lot further. And um, I was so proud of that because uh, a lot of moms and dads have to make a decision on going back to work or staying at home. And sometimes it, the, the economics of it doesn't work. When we come back, there is a proposed resolution to address bullying. And a council member asks the state to cut in half the toll fees on the ICC. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breyer. Coming up next, we'll tell you how the Rockville City Police are giving back this holiday season and how you can get involved too when County Report This Week continues. Going shopping this holiday season? Coming up with the perfect gift for everyone on your list isn't easy. It takes a lot of creativity to get the right gift for the right person. 
But when you find the perfect gift, don't add to your holiday stress. Be prepared when you stop to shop. You don't have to be this creative. Be sure to bring your reusable bags. Bring your bag. Fight litter. This season, don't let a holiday celebration become a tragedy. If you're drinking, designate a driver. If anyone in your party has had too much to drink, see that they get a ride home with someone sober or call them a taxi. If you need a ride home, call Sober Ride at 800-200-TAXI. Sober Ride will give you a free ride home up to a $30 fare. For more information on taxi service in Montgomery County, go to our website at montgomerycountymd.gov. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Fagelli. Council members have sponsored a resolution that encourages the Maryland General Assembly to provide resources to establish multidisciplinary teams to address bullying. The idea is to give these teams the help they need to bolster bullying prevention efforts, support to victims, and guidance and remediation to the perpetrators. There's cyberbullying, there's bullying in the craft classroom, there's all kinds of bullying going on uh, in schools and outside of schools. I mean, adults are being bullied online. So bullying in our community is a huge issue and we're taking steps now and partnering with um, other elected officials and other jurisdictions. It's, it's actually very gratifying that we're all on the same page. We see that in our school system, that we still have challenges. We still have children that are uh, the recipients of and are the perpetrators of bullying. And so we've got to make sure that we're providing the support necessary for them and we've got to strengthen our laws. Now we get our police update from Officer Marcus Dixon, who brings us the latest about a home invasion that took place in the city of Gaithersburg. Officer? Greetings, everyone. The Major Crimes Division of Montgomery County is investigating a home invasion that occurred on December 3rd, shortly after midnight, in the 6th District on Whetstone Drive. Officers were called for a shooting, and upon arrival were directed to an apartment on Whetstone Drive where they found someone who had succumbed to his injury and who had passed away. A preliminary investigation reveals that two subjects were in the home when an unknown number of subjects entered the home separ and separated them. A brief argument ensued and the suspects left. The first occupant went to check on the other one and he was found dead. If there is any information whatsoever on this case, please contact the Major Crimes Division at 240-773-5070. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Dixon, for that update. Would you be willing to jump into the icy waters of the Chesapeake Bay this January for a good cause? Well, that's exactly what some members of the Rockville City Police will be doing, and our Rockville 11's Bridget Broyer has more. Bridget? That's right, the Rockville City Police are keeping cool this holiday season as they raise funds for Special Olympics. It's freezing cold. It happens every January and thousands of people can be found screaming with smiles on their faces. It's the annual polar bear plunge and Rockville City Police are prepping for another successful dip in the Chesapeake Bay to raise money for Special Olympics Maryland. You raise or donate $50 and that gets you their entry fee and then you just you make a web page and you keep going and adding and adding donations to help with Special Olympics. And then you go down and you, they blow a whistle and you go running in the bay and you can go up to your knees or you can dive all the way under. You know, there's people running around everywhere freezing cold. So it's just, it's crazy, but it's a good time. Rockville City Police will take the plunge at Sandy Point State Park on January 26th. Last year, 12 of our own police officers, including the department's K-9 unit, were among the 11,000 people who participated and raised over $2.1 million. It uh, shows we're giving back to the community, and that's a, that's a big thing in police work to go out and provide services for your community and also, you know, help. We're out there making a difference, and it, it goes a long way. And uh, just to see the smile on some of these athletes' faces. The Rockville City Police Department is looking for your help to support this year's plunge. To donate to the team, go to plungemd.com and search Rockville City Police. Make a donation, help out, because uh, we're freezing for a reason. So, For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Breuer. It's been one year since the Inner County Connector officially opened for business. The highway connects I-270 in Gaithersburg to I-95 in Laurel with a system of variable tolls depending on the time of day. Currently, it costs motorists $8 during rush hour for end-to-end -end commutes on the 18-mile ICC. This has kept many off the highway. 
Council member Phil Andrews is calling upon the Maryland Transportation Authority to cut the tolls on the roadway in half to increase use of the ICC. Given the high tolls, it's no surprise that the ICC is underused. It feels more like an airport runway than a major highway. When you're on it, you can count the cars you know, in front of you and behind you up for several hundred yards. And so it's underused. It was a very expensive highway. We want people to use it. But the high tolls, $8 a day tolls, as predicted, as, as, uh, as I and others predicted years ago, would keep people off the road, and that's what's happened. So uh, what I've done is propose that the Maryland Transportation Authority cut the tolls in half to get people to use the highway. Uh, try this for at least a year and see the impact. It's ridiculous to have a $3 billion highway, counting the debt financing costs, so underused and not taking the traffic off local roads that it was stated that it would do. When we come back, the city of Gaithersburg has a new manager. We'll tell you who that is. An MCPS superintendent holds several community meetings. Stay tuned. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. to kind of report this week on Lorna Frigelli. It's official, the city of Gaithersburg has a brand new manager. Tony Tomasello has been appointed by the mayor and city council. Tomasello had been serving as acting city manager since June, and after a national search, he was officially hired to occupy the post. According to Mayor Sidney Katz, the new manager brings familiarity with the city's operations and staff knowledge of local and regional issues, and a solid background in economic development. Gaithersburg's city manager serves as the chief's administrative officer for the city, including a professional staff of 272 full-time employees and a city budget of over $50 million. Superintendent Josh Starr recently held his first of six community days. The all-day event gave Dr. Starr an opportunity to hear firsthand from MCPS staff and stakeholders. MCPS TV has the story. Good morning, how you doing? Superintendent of Schools Joshua Starr held his first Community Day event of the school year in the Damascus, Magruder, Gaithersburg, and Watkins Mills school clusters. Dr. Starr interacted with students, toured classrooms and had an opportunity to speak with teachers, principals and staff throughout the day. By visiting schools in the county, by talking to teachers and staff and leaders, and by talking to parents and the principals as well, it just gives me such a sense of what's going on in the county. And the best thing is to talk to the staff and to hear what they need and uh, from us. During his first stop of the day at Laytonsville Elementary School, Dr. Starr met with staff from the school clusters and even participated in Laytonsville's televised morning announcements. What I like best is going to schools, seeing what you're doing every day, talking to you, um, and trying to then go back and think of ways we can uh, make school better. I think it's really exciting that he took the time to come to our school and get out in the community and see things about what's happening in each of those schools levels. It's really nice that he cares and you can tell that he cares and I think that he's brought a new enthusiasm to the teaching again. I think the big wow was having him reach out to teachers to be here and to actually physically be here talking to them shows them that he wants feedback. They can uh, hear what he has to say, but he can hear what they have to say. And I love the fact that he opened it up to questions. 
The community day also included an afternoon coffee with staff and concluded with a town hall meeting for parents and community members where they had the opportunity to share their thoughts and ideas with Dr. Starr. Parents asked questions on a range of topics, including Curriculum 2.0, the MCPS budget, and acceleration. It's a good opportunity for parents to voice their opinion. We had a good turnout, and I think it was very passionate. When you have a meeting like this, you start connecting with the teachers, you start connecting with the community, and it really puts a face on the administration at MCPS. Thank you for coming tonight, and I hope to see you soon. The next community day is scheduled for December 13th in the Einstein High School Cluster Schools. Montgomery College recently honored philanthropist Paul Peck for not only another generous gift, but also for how his generosity is potentially opening doors for MC students in a dynamic and ever-growing Montgomery County industry. With the building of the new biotech center amidst the growing expansion of its Germantown campus, Montgomery College just widened the playing field for its students to enter the biotech industry with a new biotechnology certificate program that would allow students to have an opportunity to join the county's ever-growing advanced technology workforce. It's pretty awesome, man. Uh, I say all the students here are really, really privileged. Uh, the Paul Peck Lab is really well endowed in terms of equipment. I mean, uh, a lot of the startup companies, uh, the biotech companies that are around here, they come to the school. The creation of the new program was made possible through a $1 million gift from philanthropist Paul Peck. Montgomery College, which shares the building with the county, renamed the building the Paul Peck Academic and Innovation Building in Peck's honor. Mr. Peck so values academic innovation that the name of this building includes both of those words. It is the Paul Peck Academic and Innovation Building. Mr. Peck, who through the years has contributed approximately $4.5 million to Montgomery College, believes that through this new program, Montgomery College provides its students with the fundamentals that will allow them to compete in the biotech workforce and in life. Sound fundamentals is critical thinking, reason problem solving and decision making, and effective writing and communications. With these skills, a person will be able to compete for the rest of his or her life. Because when you hire someone, you hire that person to get a job done and on time. And Montgomery College is great because it provides what industry needs and it provides a sound foundation for our young people. So Mr. Peck's philanthropic support of us allows us the opportunity to provide support to students who can come to us on scholarships and really have the opportunity to go to uh, college without worrying about how they're going to pay for it. That is significant. For County Report This Week in Germantown, I'm Steve Houck. When we come back, over 100 county employees are awarded by a national association. Also, the Toys for Tots campaign is in full swing. We'll tell you where to donate a new toy. The Kentlands Mansion is the setting for Breakfast with Santa, coming up next on County Report This Week. The William E. Cross Foundation has awarded Montgomery College a grant that will provide scholarships for MC students in financial need. Scholarships will benefit veterans choosing any major, plus students majoring in business, computer science, paralegal, or criminal justice studies. Montgomery College math professor John Hammond has been named Maryland Professor of the Year by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and the Council for Advancement and Support of Education. This marks the fourth consecutive year an MC professor has received this prestigious award. And MC professor Sharon Fector has been named President-Elect of the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese. She is the first community college professor to be elected president of the association. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Overjilly. The signs of the holiday season are all around us. The city of Gaithersburg recently hosted a breakfast with Santa. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports this annual event in the Kenlands community is always popular with the young and the young at heart. Sonia? The Kentlands Mansion was a joyous place to be today as dozens of local kids had breakfast with Santa Claus. Will you guys smile? 
You have to smile. Santa likes smiles. Sisters Kylie and Lainey Parker were all smiles when they met with Santa. I told him a couple things that I wanted. Um, I helped her and um, I made sure he knew that I was being good. What are you hoping Santa brings you for Christmas? A Barbie computer. At the sold out breakfast, local children dressed in their holiday best took turns presenting Santa with their wish list. A microphone, 3DS, a car drives, Mario Kart 7, cheerleading Barbies, Mario 3D Land, a birthday wishes Barbie doll, and, and I think that's all. Upstairs in the beautifully decorated mansion, another group of children were performing seasonal songs. We were playing a bunch of music in an upstairs room, and it would all go downstairs, down the stairs to the people, and they wouldn't see us individually. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. This is the first time I've, I've been to Breakfast with Santa, and it was fantastic. And they were wonderful. The kids had a, a room that they could relax in before, you know, in between playing, and they got to meet Santa Claus, which was, you know, awesome. They're coming from all over, everywhere from the Kentlands, the Gaithersburg, general area, but we have a lot of people from both Frederick and Silver Spring. The highlight's always Santa, and the highlight is always what the craft is going to be. I most certainly will come back, maybe every year if they have it. Before he headed back to his workshop, Santa wished everyone a happy holiday. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. For County Report this week, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. And in the spirit of the season, we would like to remind residents that the county's Fire and Rescue Service is collecting toys for needy families and underprivileged children. The Toys for Tots campaign is in full swing and all Montgomery County Fire and Rescue stations will serve as drop-off sites. We ask that you bring new unwrapped toys. The toys can be dropped off until December 18th. And now in our Pet of the Week segment, we go to Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Today, she brings us a male cat. Kathy? Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And this lovely gentleman here is Brahms. He is an eight-year-old cat. Now, cats can live to 20, 21 easily. So he's just entering his prime of his life. So he's not too old for adoption. And he's very sweet. And something unusual about Brahms is Brahms has actually been declawed. We do not endorse that. We do not think it's a good thing. It's an actual an amputation process for the cat and very, very painful for the cat. But this cat has been declawed already, so he is never going to be scratching any sort of furniture, so he doesn't even need a scratching post, really. But he's very nice. He's a neutered male. He's very affectionate. He's looking for a home. So really, come on down and meet Brahms. He wants to go home with you. And as you can see, he's kind of a dark color, a tortoise shell with a little bit of white in there. And he's got the cutest little white nose. So if you're looking for a little white-nosed pussycat, Brahms wants to go home with you. So come down to this shelter on Rothgeb Drive in Rockville. Or give us a call at 240-773-5967. Or you can visit Brahms and all the other animals that we have here at mchumane.org. And remember, we are so much more than just dogs and cats. We have hamsters and gerbils and chinchillas, parakeets and parrots, everything you can imagine. So please don't go shop at a pet store. Give us a call at the shelter. Always adopt, don't shop. We will wrap up the show this week congratulating the 104 county employees that were award recipients from the National Association of Counties this year. 13 Montgomery County departments received the achievement awards for implementing 19 new and innovative programs that modernized county government and increased services to county residents. Executive Leggett hosted a ceremony at the Executive Office Building to congratulate and honor the service of each of these individuals. The awarded programs range from a police adventure camp to the Excel Beyond the Bell program. Congratulations to all. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us at this time every week 
for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili and thank you for watching.